Hi, at One Bonsai we build projects using virtual reality and therefore we thought it would be fun to do a quick comparison of the NVIDIA GPUs we have laying around the office. Our GPUs in stock are the GTX 1080 Ti, the RTX 2080 and the new RTX 3080. In the description we provide a bit more background as to which specific brands they are as well as the benchmark setup we used. For our tests, we focused on the performance metrics that matter for VR projects. The main component we looked at is the frames per second in combination with resolution. To this end, we ran two different benchmarks, VRMark's Blue Room and Unigine. Additionally, we checked the impact of DLSS on performance and we had a look at ray tracing. So, let's dive straight into the results. First up, VRMark Blue Room, which we use as our default VR benchmark. It is particularly interesting as it uses a lot of moving elements, lights, and complex geometries. When we look at the results, we notice a large increase in FPS in the 3080 versus the two other cards. This test shows the level of detail that we can currently achieve with virtual reality while running at an acceptable frame rate. During this test, we noticed that the VR standard refresh rate of 90Hz wasn't cutting it, so we switched over to the Valve Index HMD. This headset allows a refresh rate of up to 144Hz. We noticed that the RTX 3080 was capable of consistently hitting 120 frames per second and higher, compared to the other GPUs which could not reach 90 consistently. Second, the Unigine Future Benchmark. This performance-heavy benchmark also yields some interesting results. It clearly shows what is in store for the future of VR, and this future seems closer than ever. In a 2K per eye experience, we already have about 75 frames per second for the 3080. Only a modest increase was visible from the 1080 Ti to the 2080. If we then move to the Unigine 4K benchmark, the results obviously are much lower. However, at this point, producing such resolution clearly is still very taxing, even for the 3080. That being said, it is clearly indicating a step in the right direction towards high resolution virtual reality. Moving on then to ray tracing. Ray tracing makes it possible to provide way better looking graphics in games. As everyone knows, this technology is only available on the RTX cards. Obviously, performance is in the socks for the 1080 Ti, and again, a good improvement is visible for the 3080. While it seems that ray tracing in VR is still not feasible at this time, we are getting closer to making it a virtual reality. The biggest take for this video was DLSS. DLSS allows upscaling a lower resolution image to a higher resolution using AI. We are most interested in the use of DLSS in VR as it promises much higher resolutions for the same performance hit. It clearly is a possible solution to produce VR in 4K. Note the positively huge uptick in frames per second when DLSS is on. This really shows the potential of DLSS in gaming, but also for VR applications. High frame rates with high resolutions definitely seem achievable now. We really look forward to Unreal Engine supporting DLSS 2.1, the version that adds support for VR in the near future. This benchmarking series has again shown us that the 3080 is a nice step up from the 2080 and also shows us that we can now safely move on from the 10 series. Furthermore, we can clearly see the potential of DLSS for our production. We look forward to doing the same tests soon with the upcoming Big Navi. Stay tuned for a quick Benchy then too.